Hi, I'm Lori Rose, nurse practitioner at the Windrose Trafalgar location, and I'm back today to talk to you about the book Younger Next Year. The book was written by Chris Crawley and Harry Lodge. Harry is a doctor who uh, practices in New York City, and Chris is one of his patients. When they first wrote the book, Chris was 70 and in fairly decent shape, but wanting to know how he could be functionally young. And Harry specialty was is aging and he his passion is teaching his patients what they can do to stay functionally young. So the message of the book Younger Next Year is that aging is inevitable and by aging I mean your hair is going to turn gray, your skin is going to wrinkle and start to look kind of old, you're going to have some metabolic changes like your heart rate slowing down and those are things that that are going to happen no matter what you do. It's That's just aging. But the decay, and by decay, I mean um, joint pain, balance problems, falling down, getting weaker, forgetting things, feeling tired all the time. Basically, feeling old is optional. Basically, when you're young and you're all the way up through your 30s and probably some into your 40s, your body naturally grows and, and gets stronger. You know, if you go to the gym and work out, you notice that, that you can gain muscle mass pretty quickly. Young children grow just almost no matter what they do, just from, from eating. That's The body is just naturally in a grow mode when you're younger. As you get into your late 40s and beyond, your body switches to more of a decay mode and it's like a tide that's always sweeping you that that direction of because because of aging because of how old you are stress inactivity loneliness and worry all send a, ste a steady trickle of inflammation into your body all the time it's dripping drip 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 and that inflammation is what leads to a lot of those symptoms that I refer to as decay so the important things that that you need are physical exercise involvement with people and and being involved in your life to turn that switch so that you don't have to accept the joint pain fatigue balance problems weakness that often come along with aging harry's first rule is that you need to exercise six days a week for the rest of your life that tide of decay is powerful and it takes exercise six days a week almost every day of the rest of your life to turn that tide back the other way. Now I know some of you are sitting out there looking at me saying, Lori, you are crazy. There is no way I can exercise six days a week for the rest of my life. And, I can, and I'm going to tell you honestly that I used to feel that way as well. <clears throat> but if you think about it, letting the tide sweep you into a place where you're tired, you're in pain, you can't do the things that you like to do, your family maybe has to start taking care of you, you have to use a walker or a wheelchair eventually maybe to get around. Letting that tide sweep you into all of that, that's really what's crazy. When you can change all of it and turn it all around by exercising for just 45 minutes a day, it's really not that long six days a week. So I encourage you, if you're thinking about doing this, if you, if you agree with me that it's not crazy to exercise six days a week, to not say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to start out pretty gradually. I'm going to try it just maybe two days a week. I encourage you not to do that. I encourage you to start right off six days a week. That's the way you'll see the best results. And it, it'll, it will be easier to develop a habit that way when you just plan to do it every single day and not get up in the morning and decide is this going to be one of my exercise days or not. You feel better, you're physically, mentally, and, and emotionally feeling better. People tend to be drained, feel drained from being sedentary and so that, that makes it hard to think about adding something else in their schedule because they're feeling so drained but generally exercise will turn that feeling around. Some exercise you can do at home or outdoors and it costs almost nothing. Hiking, uh, some people enjoy jogging if it's not too hard on your joints, bike riding, swimming, those kinds of things are easy to do and usually are, don't cost that much. 
I do encourage people to join a gym because you have to have some place to exercise on rainy days or when it's too cold to exercise outdoors. The YMCA, the community center, whatever there is in your area, shop around. There are usually some fairly inexpensive options. Some of you may be out there thinking, I'm not athletic. I hated gym class when I had to do it in school. I've never exercised. This is just not going to be for me. And I can tell you that, that that description that I just gave absolutely describes me. I've never been athletic. I did not like gym in school. I was always one of the last people picked for a team. But I have found ways to be active most days of the week, usually six days a week, for several years now. So it's for everybody. It's just not for people who are athletes. You can do it. When I'm struggling, I sign up for a class, so I'll have that community and accountability because in this journey, when you're trying to exercise regularly, you're going to have periods of time where you just really don't feel like doing it. And in that case, you need a little something to, to grab onto to help you get and, get and stay on track. And in that case, I sign up for a class. I've had a few sessions with the trainer at my gym when I'm feeling like I need some new exercises to do, specifically when I'm doing strength training, which we'll talk more about in another video. So I encourage you to start thinking about this idea of exercise six days a week. Before you get started, talk to your doctor, make sure, or, or your medical provider, make sure that you're healthy enough to do it, that you don't need a stress test or any other test before you get started. Our next videos, we're going to talk more specifically about what kind of activities you need to do and how many days a week you need to do the different activities. So we'll get in more into the specifics later. But for now, I want you to start to think about this. Think about that tide of aging that's trying to sweep you away towards feeling crummy versus making a change and thinking about exercising regularly.